Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another exciting episode of Robert Patrick James Cahill's The Bobcast. With you, as always, is Bob, live in the proverbial lounge staring at the trademark Ouija board. Stoked to have tonight's guest back on the show. It's been on a few times, I believe, in various different formats. Uh, one of the most notorious ones was way back in the day when the show first started. I think it was in 2014 at the Valley Forge Music well, actually, it was just the Valley Forge Hotel, I believe, at that time. It wasn't the casino. It was one of the East of the Hebrides concerts. Matter of fact, it's so good that I'll provide a link down below here in the comments. Um, we've uh, worked together. We've been under the uh, stewardship of teacher-student. We've drank together. We've talked creatively together. And now, instead of being in some dingy studio across the seat, we're up here in the woods, in the natural lounge. And it's happy hour. What are you sipping on, Mr. Zach Coleman? Back to the show. Hey, thanks, man. Uh, sip of sunshine. You want to be like right, right there? there. See, yeah, see what it looks. See the bars right there. Yeah. What uh, are you drinking on the sip of sunshine? Sip of sunshine. Yeah. Figured you it was appropriate. So I saw you a couple of weeks ago at a birthday party, uh, a one-year-old birthday party. Or so we're no, old. his second. Two. Excuse me. One, two, same thing. Yeah. He doesn't. It know. also very. It confuses me because it's like, you know, when you're born, you're zero, I, and you get one. Like, I used to struggle with that as a kid, just be like, what do you mean? Because, like, if you think about, like, day one, you're born. You yeah. should be one then. You don't remember. I try to ask people. Who came up with this? The three months versus one? I don't know. Or, it's, hey, oh, you're 16 and a half, uh, 0.58 weeks. I hate that oh, when we talk yeah. about, it. like, oh, he's 24 months. Yeah. Like, you mean he's two he's years. He's two winter solstice, uh, like, moons away from being <laughs> 7,348 minutes. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Cater that, but I mean, you know me. I yeah. never wanted to have kids anyway. Yeah, you never want to have kids, but it's interesting. But you're still yet a dad, so it is. It is a clear path towards being a father, regardless. Though you just found a different way. I I always say that I and people wish me like Happy Father's Day. Mm -hmm. I say, you know, of course, you just say thank you, but like I'm not a father. I might be a mm -hmm. dad, but I'm not a father. Just like when my father died, I'll still mention to people like, "Oh, my dad." And they're like, "I thought your dad was dead." I was like, "No, my father is dead, but my dad is still alive, being my stepfather." Because hmm. yes. I don't, I don't like calling yeah. him that. I feel yeah. like it's it's rude. And, you know, I know the man, he was like, cool to you. He, he was like going great. Didn't he show you how to work on jeeps? A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like um, I remember your green jeep that you had back in the day, the one with the stick shift. Yep. Actually, go like this since we're sitting like right, right. Put it, like see how I have it right here. Like yep. And then you can talk. It's like a lob. Yeah. You can even clip on if you want. Yeah, I will. I got uh, ADD, so I got to hold it. It's funny that you bring that up Perfect. because almost. Everybody that knew me, well, I had that Jeep for 15 years, and I'm thir I'll be 39 this year, so I had it for a long time. Can I ask you a question? Sure. How come you never got a tattoo of it? I don't know. Never thought about Can it. Can you do that? I right, won't. Right now? Bring him in, everybody. He's here yeah. in the woods. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> you know, uh, we've had such a illustrated history, history together, like, throughout all of time, but when I see you, when I think of you, I always go back to the days of Sam Goody. Yeah, man. You know, and for those that are not I was in like the United States years of America, uh, outside folks, Sam Goody was a, a music store franchise that I, I don't know if the company exists still, but the store is closed. The retail locations across America are closed. Oh, yeah. And we were young tykes um, slinging CDs at the heyday of when CDs were, in my opinion, the, the most popular coveted item, you know, amongst 12 to like what 18 year olds at christmas time so like oh, we yeah. would always have people coming in and we'd also have people trying to steal shit yep like yeah you know, i spent uh, half my paycheck there when i got it <laughs> there, I, I there's a listener of the show that i won't name but uh, i always thought it was so funny because he told me years later like when we checked you out for a cd right we didn't have those like uh we didn't have something very complicated to get it off. We had this magnetic yeah. tray. It's like a bottle opener almost. Yes. And this listener of the show stole that. So he could just go in there and take whatever he wanted and shit. take his time. And he said at one point, like, he, he realized, well, if he did that and also occasionally, you know, would buy things at the same time, like, you know, who's paying attention to that? Sure. Plus, we were kids. We but... didn't give a shit. So that and, like, I don't know if you were with me that day. I think you were. Uh, for me as a music fan and also as somebody who was like, you know, the proprietor of the goods back in the day, there's this album that comes out. And when it came out, I think it sold 1.3 million copies and it was like a, a record at the time. And the name of the album was um, Chocolate Starfish and the Hot Dog Flavored Water. Oh, yeah, Limp Biscuit. Were you there that day? Mm, no, I, was, I don't think I was. I think 
that was maybe before I started or May, right I was there before and you got the gig. No, I think it's the other way around. Weren't you there before I got there? Uh, no, because you gave me the answers to the test. <laughs> and then we started talking about dropping acid. Oh, uh, yeah. And right I, was, I was 16. And then like years later, like less than like two, three years later, I'm in front of you as a teacher. Um, <laughs> you don't know me. Good times. Uh, Hunter S. Thompson uh, up there, uh, the teacher. Uh, but yeah, when that album came out, like I remember the lines, you know, like lines of people and like Fuck lines, various different like formats of people too. Cause it's like now you don't see the face of music no more in the, um, streaming retail world. consumption, you know, like I hate it. Um, hold on a sec. Yep. I, uh, I, I hate that. I don't have a physical copy of stuff anymore because I used to have an I, uh, iTunes. Yes. And then when I switch back to a PC, I can't take my iTunes and put it on my PC because mm. Apple doesn't allow that. So now all this money that I spent on all this music is stuck on this iPod from 2010. I can help you with that one day. Right. I know how to rip it. Um, but yes, I, I agree. I'm, I'm very, um, what's the adjective? I mean, like, God, there's so many different ways. But uh, like, in the nutshell, I feel like flabbergasted. Just the, like the medium was hijacked almost and like taken from us as musicians taken from us as mu music fans i should say and now packaged in a way where people will never understand how exciting it was to see the lines of people buying an album with a ridiculous title such as chocolate starfish and hot dog flavored water sure i couldn't get over it my grandma used to love to microwave hot dogs in the um in the microwave yeah did i say it the backwards yeah um <laughs> right. i'm dyslexic everybody knows but um yeah, she'd love that. And I remember, like, uh, the smell of that water and being like, oh, God, no. You remember uh, buying tickets or lining up to buy tickets at Boscow's? Yes, yes. Ticketmaster existed. That was a danger move because I worked for Ritz Camera in Boscow's. I, I remember that. So I was always at the, you know, the front of the line or, like, ready to get to the front of the line. And then I mistakenly opened up a line of credit, and that was the first time I got <laughs> in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And well, when you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, hell, I just got my first major credit card last year. Yeah, I, I had credit and then screwed myself, then screwed myself when I went to L.A. And like at the time, I'm 22. I've never had more than like a thousand bucks in my checking account. And they yep. give me a, a credit card with like a 1.5 APR for like a year or something like that. But then it would go up to like 22. 22 yeah, yeah um, But like that year in L.A., like we go out. I remember when you guys went. Yeah. And I'd be like, everybody want a drink? Let's get it. You know, and like, sure. I, you know, well, I'd be buying that everybody's drinks, dude. Like. Yeah, and then you realize, oh, I can't pay for any of this. I did something terrible once. I fucked about it before, but we'll bring it up. <laughs> it used to DJ in Manhattan Beach. Were you ever there? Never been to California. I'm so sorry to tell you that, to hear that, because I would love to take you one day, because I myself would love to move back. It's I haven't been west of Texas. I've moved, when I moved there, I became more familiar with that city because I had to, just because of you know being 22 and like being in a new place is frightening. If you don't know where you're at. It's it exciting. So I knew my, I still knew my way around there better than I do here. That's how I felt when I lived in Brooklyn. Right. And when I moved you feel to sad about it, right? It's like, oh, there's definitely a nostalgia. Benjamin, my, yeah. my oldest just went up this weekend and, uh, he was telling me something. He's like, oh, I went to Rockaway beach. I was like, would you take the fucking A train the whole way? Yeah. And he's like, how do you remember that? Mm -hmm. I'm like, cause I lived there, man. Did you hear that? No, I hear lots okay, of things. So what, right are the, 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 what are the strange things like? I'm usually talking to myself out here sometimes. Like the medium switches now back and forth. Sometimes guests, sometimes solo, right? Sure. And sometimes while solo, that. like down the bottom trail, I'll take you. Like I hear things like right behind it, dude. I swear. Like footsteps. The amount of life that's surrounding us right now that oh, we yeah. can't see is, is mind blowing. So not too long ago, um, it's actually been cleared up now, but do you remember like two Fridays ago, you and I were going to get together and there was like a big storm? Yep. Remember that day? So um, I had a window in between gigs at uh, my job where I was like, I just want to get some exercise. We'll come up here and just go for a quick run. You know, it seemed to stop raining. Sure. Bad time to come. Because as soon as I get to the hill that we walked up, it starts to get nasty, dude. And like, you've already committed. And I've committed. And I get here. And that day, I couldn't find my earbuds at all. And it's like a thing with them. So I got to have music. You know what I mean? But you have um, You know, I, I've done both. And I do both. So, like, I listen to music on the way up, podcast, and the podcast, and then the whole way back home, silence. It's not really silence, though. It's this type of silence, I say. Nature. Yeah. Nature bathing. 
But um, that particular day, I needed to hear music because you know it's the you get that it's itch. the gateway to the soul and also helps you like with things and also Absolutely. being completely aware of the fact and just so like regardless of the fact that the medium changed so much and you know music has been hijacked, I'm still aware of the fact that you know this is less than 200 years old the ability to listen to music without a live musician yeah absolutely. exactly it used to be an event or you had to learn how to play yourself exactly or yeah. hey on thursday night of what or you know next month on the thursday somebody's going to be playing their violin and somebody like, what's a violin we're gonna you know find I mean? out like, I, I just i think it's so cool you know it's like we and like to have these earbuds that i can wirelessly connect to it's a it's a privilege you know Absolutely. So well, I we can't find them. Granted. I look and I'm like, that's it. I'll just go listen. You know, the wind's kicking up, dude. I walk through that tr threshold right there where that lady is, and that tree. See it crack right there? See this? Oh yeah, over there. Yeah, Split. we saw that coming up. And when it was you were up here for that. I was right here. Okay, that had to be so loud as shit. I didn't have my headphones on. Right. So if I had my headphones on, there's a good chance that like I w wouldn't have known it would. You know, like it happened. It could have hit me if I would have been off by. Like, that had to be loud. Like, that's I, big. That was like seven. Hey, how are you? Good. Greetings. Today. I was like, wonderful. Uh, 15 seconds from here to there about, right? So if you think about it, right, I could have been changing tracks, putting my iPod, my Beats Not paying away. attention. But dude, the sound that it made, like, I'm standing like right here when it goes down, right? Right. And I can't tell. I'm at this like corner, like part of the park right now where there's a bench, but there's like this like path that goes off to the right. I don't know which of these trees is going. No. And all these tiny branches are going. So, like, there's debris all through here. And, like, the sound that came out of the ground was, like, a thousand imprisoned slaves coming off the shackles and busting up through the dirt, ripping the roots in half, dude. And it just got so loud. Like, yeah. you know, the, like, saying they're always, like, you know, uh, a tree doesn't make any sound of Nobody, yeah, it does. Whatever. It makes sound, dude. And then <laughs> yes, it, it does. fell. You could see how the tree fell that way. You could see, like, the dead, like, part of it. Yeah, I saw when, when we came it up. When it hit the ground, man, it, it, this whole landscape right here just bounced, you know? Like, it's a lot of energy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That tree's big. And, and the energy was just, like, you know, like, and then the wind kicks up, dude. And I'm like, I better get out of here. And then I realize I'm, I can't go this way because there's way too much stuff. So I'm going to go straight through here and there's like this opening and that'd be cool for a bit because it's so intense turn the corner and when i get to the corner i come across this dude and he's got a ponytail he's got a dog named georgie it's my new friend brian who's going to be on the show next okay uh and i was like dude you'll never believe what the hell happened to me he's like no way man are you kidding me and i'm like um my name's bob uh what do you you know what's your name he's, and like i tell him i'm a podcaster or whatever i'm like what do you do he's like oh i'm like a psychedelic medicine tree person who assists people on their journeys you know and i'm like he's the, the I, guy he's the guru that i yeah. walked into he's the guy that like the first time you do acid he's the, the dude there with you be like it's all gonna be good we're gonna have a good time it, he's like he, he's like that but it was like almost like i was just like you know the tree everything what are the chances to, to get to this guy right so then, uh, and, and like i realized i like talking to him and i'm like hey man which way are you going he's like i'm going out to the meadow he's like oh, i'm going there too I was like, you mind if I come and walk talk with you? He's like, sure, man, let's go. So we go, we bond, talk about stuff, talk about his work, my work. Um, and then we get to this other landing and I hear the sound again. Something and then else. I get to see another tree. But this one, like 170, 180 feet in the sky, just then collapsed into a whole bunch of other ones. Yep. Nature's the shit, dude. I wish I could get paid to just observe nature. And People the, do. I know. What's that job called, dude? I don't know. Freedom? They're scientists. I know. Maybe they're, I should just tell people that's what I am. Now. I'm not a podcaster. I'm a scientist. I'm out here observing. I mean, if, if somebody's paying you to do it, that'd be great. So, you know, like when you pay attention to your environment and like you become aware of all of its intricate parts, you start to like understand it in a, a way where, you know, the non-physical sometimes becomes physical. What I'm trying to ask you is, working like i i don't know if i ever told you this act but i'm scared to death of elevators i got stuck in an elevator yeah, in 1992 place. in akron ohio at the soapbox derby national championship i just found out today that that was a thing in akron ohio very cool just found so out my today. son's going to be in the soapbox next year and we're going to win the whole thing in country and we'll go back to akron and i hope to go back to that elevator where i got stuck in there 
I can get you stuck in an elevator. Oh, uh, <laughs> don't. Um, <laughs> and we had Domino's Pizza because back in the nineties, that, that was, was the like, shit. Man. When, yes, yeah, that and Pizza Hut. But when when Domino's first came out, do you remember that? It was like as hot as like I'm, Mortal Kombat as anything. Well, I remember the Noid. People were just like, "What, dude? Are you kidding?" Being a kid and and remember the Noid was out. I don't know when Domino's started, but it was that was it. Like you were a Pizza Hut. It's like yep. kind of like a Coke or a Pepsi. Yep. You know, you were one or the other. It, and like, so no. you're, you're afraid. You're not alone. I know plenty of people. Are but afraid. Here's the thing: is that there was just so many people inside the elevator. There were so many people with us, and like the oxygen thing started to happen. You know, no, like, that's that's in your head. Eh, whatever. Maybe I panicked. But then, like, uh, just this weekend, uh, while away with my folks, uh, I felt like I got stuck in the elevator with these these people in the hotel. And here it just turned out like uh, we were so drunk we nobody pushed a button. That's exactly what I was gonna say. We used to when I worked at the Hard Rock. There, you would get calls for entrapments, and then you push the hall button, yeah. and the car would open. And they're like, "I was stuck for so long." You're like, "Did you push the button?" And they go, uh, "They told me I didn't have to." You're like, "Well, the elevator's never going to go anywhere if when, you don't push the so, button." Like when you get into a building and you get into the elevator, can you sense like if it's good, bad, or yeah, absolutely. It's just like a, it's a machine. Mm. It's just like a car. You get into a piece of shit car, mm. and it doesn't sound right, or the fluid is leaking, or yeah. Something. I mean, you you can tell, yeah. But it's um, it's just a machine. Have you ever been stuck in an elevator? Have been you stuck ever... in elevators all the time, like the longest? Um, well, sometimes I get I get stuck intentionally because we're trying to figure out the problem. Mm, so so I, you yeah. got to ride the elevator to hear what's going on or see, or maybe it only happens at a certain spot in the hoist mm. way. So you get stuck intentionally. I don't know, maybe an hour. Two what's hours? the strangest thing you've seen? Like, what's the most bizarre occurrence where someone? you know, did something or is it, usually... I don't really have that much. I mean, I was, nobody expecting... had sex in there. No, but last year I was working at the Sheraton in Wilmington mm -hmm. and, uh, they have conventions, yes. the hotel. Mm -hmm. And I guess this is Friday. And I guess around like 10 o'clock, these people with, you know, I guess normal people would call them strange, mm -hmm. multicolored hair. And then you start to notice some bondage outfits. And I'm like, what's going on? Like, what is this mm -hmm. about? And uh, the second floor is like their ballroom. So I go and I see this agenda and I look and it's the, uh, the S&M greeting, like new greeting. And they have a whole agenda about, you know, slave training and master training and daddies. And then there's cocktail hour and then there's like naked bingo. Mm -hmm. And they have all these lists. So when I went to work on Monday, I was expecting to find something interesting in the pit you know, underneath the elevator. Nothing. I mean, you find condoms all the time. See, I think it's something like that. One would think that that would occur, but it's probably like the things where, like, you know, it's them selling, like, you know, that is pharmacy, like, you know, people getting together. Like, I was listening to this podcast about, like, you know, those hotels, like, when people throw those, like, big events and they hire, like, big comedians and shit. Yep. So, like, I, as I'm saying, Party. he was it's on Rogan. Like Wall Street shit. Exactly. Yep. So, Adam Sandler was on Rogan. And it's funny because he didn't talk about it, but there's, did you ever see funny people? I don't think it's so. a little it's a little less than known film that he did like in the late 2000s with um Seth Rogen okay and that's like when he was starting it, and he plays like a parody almost of himself but it's like you know like he's a comedian and he's trying to like you know revive himself after he gets like tragic news about his health so sure. I recommend it for the Bobcast listeners but he was saying in real life he got hired uh, you know to go to like one of these like big events you know for comedians and they yeah, he's like, I don't want to do it. Or the main bombs. entertainment. Exactly. And everyone yeah. bombs at this. He's like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. You know? And then they offer him a whole bunch of money. Then he winds up doing it. Sure. And then Joe is like, yeah, the thing that's crazy is nobody's laughing because they're they're scared to. Because they want to laugh at the wrong thing because they're all at the table trying to get ahead. That's a good and point. Like, God, man. That's the conventions where everyone leaves the room and they've been so contained. Yeah. But, you know, they go nuts and then start doing wild shit. Yeah, that's yeah, that's how you end up. You I, I applaud you, though, because I remember you sent, I remember a few photographs where I was like, oh, my God, Zach's got balls, dude, which I know you have. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a, like, that ties back into the, the, see uh, the below episode. Listen to it in real time, folks. It's so good. <laughs> I actually listened to it about maybe like two months ago. The, uh, I, uh, I don't know, man. I mean, my job's all right. It's, it's really just a job. If Zach was able to do what Zach wants, what would Zach be doing for occupation? And you've also worked in film and TV. You were like, yep. you want to tell everybody about that who hasn't heard the first pod? Uh, yeah, I used to work in film and television. I went to school in Florida, uh, graduated and moved to New York City and worked. Did some freelance work and then realized that, you know, you're getting screwed and taken advantage of by producers. So that's when I, I got into the union. 
Uh, I worked for the union. Technically, I didn't have a card. There's a I difference. Mean, it's, isn't that crazy? It's, yeah. It's, it's so great how life is uh, just you know provided you with such great opportunities where you're kind of the guy, but not really. So it's funny that you asked that specific question, though, because in 2007, when I was on the debate team in Williamsport when I was in college the first time, uh, my teacher asked me, Dr. Walker, said, what do you want to do? And at the time, no reservations didn't exist. But I told oh, him wow. that I wanted to do basically a job wow. like no reservations, where I just get to travel and uh, experience culture, essentially. You know, whether that be so food, good. drink, uh, entertainment, all of that. You that know what I like the most about that feeling is like when you get out there and you're in a spot, you know, and you're you, you you haven't been there, and like you know, what's that quote that Anthony was? You know, go sit at some bar. Yeah, and, you know of course, I mean? yeah, like, eat at a local restaurant. Seven item. Cheers. Um, yeah, that's, that's, I love that feeling though, when you get somewhere and it's new and like, like I was just at this bar the other day, like in, uh, where? uh, up in Gardner's Basin, which is like on the outskirts of, um, Atlantic City. And I, it's like this, like own, like little Island, you know, it's, and it's, it's thing. Told, and they, I, I really hate Atlantic City. I, uh, it's, it's the thing it's crazy is I took my kid on Saturday, you know, hotel, he likes room service and sure. all that stuff, but like. Yeah, I still gotta fulfill the duties. So we, I was like, let's go uh, over to the you know boardwalk. We'll surprise him with some rides. Went on a roller coaster. I got He's to go. At a fun age. I got to go on the Flying Dutchman with him. Yeah, for yeah. the listeners, it's like the sled that goes like this. I haven't done that in so long, dude. I wish I had that in my life, just in the backyard. Like bad day at work, I'll be back, honey. I'm on the Flying Dutchman for a couple sure. hours because like literally all your problems go away when you're re ready to fall out of the seat and gravity takes over. But I mean, it allows you to forget. We about had a things. great time. It was amazing to me that for what hundred bucks you can only ride five rides. It's like, geez, man, like you gotta. They really want you to get into those like you know, clubs and all. I'm like, dude, this is crazy. So I was like, Ty, let's go play some games. Uh, he didn't want to play any of the games because he didn't want any of the like prizes. You know, he's like, where's the PS fives? You know, so I was like, let's yeah. go on the boardwalk. <laughs> let's go on the boardwalk and see what they got. You know, and like, dude, it's just sad because it's like, you know that the the um, anywhere you go, like at least in America. You know that the infrastructure is failing from the inside and they're allowing it to happen when there is no simple service such as street cleaning. We do have that where I live. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like street cleaning shows so much um, to me, like it's the simplest thing. It's really like, do I judge people when I meet them by their cleanliness? Yeah. Well, Not because of like gross out factor, but like I feel like odor goes a long way. What's that? Odor. They oh smell, yeah, that's too, yeah. you know, I mean shit happens like. If I, if I, you know, you said I smelled today, like, well, yeah, I know what I do for a living. I just came right from there. I actually just sweat more coming up that hill than I did all day at work. And you were able to recover. Look at you now. You're not sweating at all. Oh, See, yeah, feel, no. that, that sweat, though. I mean, I think if you can sweat like that one time per day, you'll live to be 100. You know what I mean? Not that I'm saying I want to, but, like, I feel like um, that hill right there that we just did, like, uh, one of the things that I, when I'm uh, solo podcasting, it's like a training exercise, just about. is... Um, going up the hill listening to the music and like i got this you know my phone will help me track my uh my heart beat uh, you know yeah, you so i'm trying to get to the top with like no deep breath and like putting my heart in check and like i love doing it because like i remember like when i first started doing that hill you know every day like two years ago i'd be sure ready to die dude but it's great like doing it you know and Human body is an amazing thing. Mentally, though, it just like opens up lots of things too. Is like a lot of ideas can come up here. So it's like kind of crazy how like you know you walk up that hill, you sit here, and then the show begins. Because most people are like, why don't you start recording down there? I'm like, I have an idea. You don't want to be. I I honestly thought you you did, which is why I was like, I was well, I can curious. tell you that a few times like there was, <laughs> I was a little curious about some of the stuff we were talking about. I'm like, wow, this is. I didn't think this would be on the air. Oh yeah, and is, then when we got up good. here, it was like, ah, now that makes sense. Yeah, this is this is good to go, you know. No, I get it. Oh wait, put yours. See, I was like getting your shirt. Oh, there you go. Um, but yeah, I've had a few like um, guests where I realized, oh no, I can't, I can't do the. Um, sometimes I go to the the shed over there because my one friend almost killed. Like he was like, Jesus Christ, Bobby. Oh, coming up the hill. Yeah, keep his name. Well, or her name or its name or whatever you want to call he, it. They can, uh, <laughs> you know, just take it at their own pace. Yeah. You know, um, there's nothing wrong yeah, there. I think it's fun because it's like, I don't know, it, it, this is, doesn't seem, it just seems like you and I are hanging out right now. It's on tape and stuff like that. But sure. I mean, you like how I still say that shit? I can't get out of that. 
there ain't no thing as tape no more. No, but well, that's funny. Like I see people who have no business. They, they never worked in show business or anything. And I'm like, okay, we're rolling. You're not rolling shit. Yeah, there's dude. no no 16. There's nothing. <laughs> there's no there's no and if anything, if you're recording audio, it's how many times did you work on set where they were recording the 35 millimeter? Um, or was it all digital at that time? Most of the TV that I worked on, but mm. most of what I did because that was right when um, yep. right when digital, the red cameras and all that stuff were coming out. Oh yeah, that was the talk of the town. That was the big shit. That was in 2000. You remember that? I'm sorry, to cut nine, you off. But 15. The, this red camera you remember like in the beginning where they're like yeah we got this stuff but they never like really trained it to see like how to keep it cool remember how hot those cameras would get yeah man burn yourself dude it um i personally like i've shot film and i've shot digital and the thing that i love about shooting film is when you work with film mm -hmm. you're working with people who know what the fuck they're doing yes with digital all digital to me yeah. allow it allowed anybody and everybody to become a filmmaker, which is fine. I, I get it. Not everybody is a mechanic, yeah. but you know when you can do these things, it makes you feel better. But when you're on a digital shoot, go again, go again. The director is just pushing. Go again. When you shoot film, you're like, we got two yeah, exactly. three minute takes. Enough. All right, everybody needs to be at the top of their game. That's what I like. Everybody needs to know that this is it. Yeah, we we are. There is no second chances there's no ah you know we'll fix it in post now fuck that it shooting film taught you whether <laughs> it taught you whether you knew your shit or you didn't mm -hmm. or the people you were working with and when you weren't when you were the reason something fucked up mm -hmm. it's not good it's very humbling because generally on a film set they won't be like oh it, it's bob's fault or it's zach's fault they'll be like all right Let's try it again. Let's try not to do this this time. Mm. But sometimes you don't get another chance. It, uh, yeah, I'd like, it's know, much more exciting. Me, I, film. I enjoy the moments where your back's up against the wall and you got to do it. When I was playing in this church band, like, there's a couple of times where, you know, I, w I wouldn't be able to make a rehearsal. So I would just come rehearse that morning and then just play a half hour later. And the intensity and excitement of it, God, it was just, I, li I live in that energy, you know? Like, uh, when you only got one shot, I acted in a play. Sure. Th oh, yeah, especially year, And that was just the adrenaline that I got off of it. it was, I was hooked. And it's like um, a lot of I actors think you, talk any, about that. Everybody can learn a lot from working through your trauma of um, public speaking. That's why, like, one thing, Zach. Public speaking is not that hard. As long as I've known you. You're just like me, dude. You can go into any room and have a conversation as long, you know, as it's, you know, intelligible. Like sometimes, I don't know. I mean, I feel like we've always, we've always had great conversations that are uh, meaningful and they also have content. Yeah, well, that's that's the big one. Yeah, it's not, a lot of people just talk to talk. Yeah, what is that? Uh, it's you, a comfort thing. I feel like you're people, a social person. Do you allow it to happen still? Uh, yeah. Well, my wife tells me all the time that I, I, she's like, "Shut up, let them talk, let them talk." I'm like, but they're talking about something. That I, I like, oh, like the soapbox or everything. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I just figured that out today. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but no, people have always told me, like, you talk too much. Yeah, I, I try to uh, slow down when I have a guest because, like, I had the, you know, Drew said to me once, like, and I, I knew, like, he was going to say something because I was, like, all sped up. And it's like, one of the things that sucks is, like, you got to be in the right mood for the show. Like, I did the podcast once at Starbucks. I had a coffee. Bad idea, dude. I understand that. I don't like, well, that's, that's why I like the booze instead of. I do like coffee, though. I've, I've grown an appreciation for coffee. I do, I but it was like we were supposed to be in here, and then we were scrambling for an idea of where else to go. We go there. I can't get the background music off. I, I get all that. jittery. Get jittery. Yeah, no, I, I, don't, all... I don't like the, the jittery. I don't like, like the uppers. Same thing with um, like writing. Like If you're writing, and like um, you get to a point where you're like, you know, I stopped oh, doing God. that. Did you? I used to write all the time, man. I, um, I started again. I took about a three-year break with my screenplay writing stuff with my brother because of COVID. and Actually... I was wondering, how is your brother doing? He's good. He lives in New Orleans, and I'm going to go visit him this uh, fall. I'm going to go out there, I think, for Halloween. I've never been. I tried to get the ones with Drew. My buddy got married there. He lives right outside. Hey, who in, got uh, married there? A buddy from film school. Oh, that's cool. Um, he lives in Meditari, Matari, something like that. It's like northwest suburb. Um, but mm -hmm. we had a blast, man. It was too short. We were only there for like two nights. Um, that's cool. I think, I think I'm going to go for about five days. Uh, oh, yeah. Is he but, in the city proper? Yeah, he's like right there. My brother also is the manager of uh, like a, a bar movie theater. Okay. Yeah. He he did it. He got the gig that I wanted. I was sure. 
I always like I, he's got to be in his thirties now, right? I don't know if we said that on tape, but yeah, man, I tried so hard to get the job as a no, no, we didn't. No, I wasn't you, on tape. So yeah. you, so you had a job once, like um, I guess I was teaching, and like your job, like I want it more than my job, and you're like, yeah, Bob, I'm the one who's putting the letters up on the sign. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, my god, I've always wanted to do that, and like it sucks, dude. With, <laughs> yeah, but like it is, I, it's not good technology. I always thought it'd be interesting to play with the you know because you know how like my god you know what's so sad there ain't no more the marquee gone yeah you know why everything's digital everything's digital but also like they also got rid of like um <clears throat> when you go into a theater it used to be like not only was the, the oh, name coming of the attractions movie, no no like um the name of the movie would be on the you know marquee but then you'd go in you give the guy the ticket and he'd be like down the hall to the left then you go to the hall on the left and you look up where like theater one would be and there'd be another like title card like of the, the movie. No more of that. Because like I, I remember like walking in. I used in to get the, all those. I still have movie posters and shit awesome. that I took from. I have a um, uh, Batman, not Batman Begins. Um, mm -hmm. Second one with the Joker. Heath Ledger. Which one is that? Uh, Dark Knight. Dark, yeah. Dark Knight. I have that poster. Mm -hmm. So the way you could tell though too is if it was a real movie poster mm -hmm. is that it is it's see-through. Mm -hmm. it's see-through because you're putting it on the back of a light box so it needs to shine through i love that it's stuff. not the back of, you know back of a poster that's white mm -hmm. so i have a couple original posters from when i used to work in the theater yeah Still. i just i i love like the whole like i don't know i was saying on the way up too i was like i, I don't watch film as much as i used to just because and i just realized we we're having this conversation why and it is a, a lot to do about like It used to be like, you know, there'd be like a parade and like leading up to the film and like all this appreciation along the way of being like, it's coming, it's coming, you know? And, and like, you know, now it's just forgotten about. It's just like, yep. And then like, you know, you can see a film in theaters. Like I took my kid to see Despicable Me 4. Three weeks later, it's out on digital. You can the watch it at home. The next day it came out on VOD, Zach. Yeah. I could have waited. You I know, know what I mean? I mean, we well, have a good sound system at home. I have a Sonos system. I got a good one too. I and it, have dude, speakers at work. They're it's good. it's not the same. Like when I go to the cinema, mm -hmm. I I don't I don't even like taking my phone in to show them the ticket. I don't want my phone in at all. Mm. And for two hours or whatever it is, mm. this is it, man. Like, how do you get in then? Well, I do bring it in. I just have to I know, I turn it, it off. Right? So that's crazy. You can't even go to the movies without bringing your phone now. Yeah, it's it very... It used to be, leave your phone, you know? It's very irritating to me. The, uh, the QR I, code, to go, like that, and like also too, like... I just like it. One of the things that's, you know, like, you know, the marquee, also the title card. Yep. I just forgot we were podcasting. I completely forgot for a moment with everyone I was talking about. The, um, it's old, man. It's no, old shit. Part? The other part that I forgot. That's good going. Oh, just straight up. The movie theater line, like rolling up to the Andorra theater, there's, which was there's nobody selling lobby. tickets anymore. There's no ticket person. Nope. There's no. It's called a box office. Box office. There's no Excuse box me, office. But like the, at the box office at Andorra, you would see the line like to the bookstore and be like, "Oh man, we ain't gonna get I don't know there now." You, you remember throwing you know? your coat, save a seat? Oh my god! And then people would throw it. That's the only thing that was cool, but not at the expense of like losing the luster of like the movie magic. Sure. Was being able to pick your own seat. You know. I do like picking the seats beforehand me too um especially for that amount of money it yeah, should be a first come for like back in the day when it was seven eight bucks yeah yeah you get your ass there to see ace ventura and you'd be in the front row you know what i mean like staring up at the screen but now like you can sit in there proper i did go to the movies actually i did see the deadpool wolverine movie i haven't seen it. i went he uh, told me I right watch. after work the first day because i wanted to go I was like going. Did you go on a first, Thursday or Friday? Thursday at three. See, that's I, I. That's another thing I disagree with. All mm. right, the shit comes out at midnight. I was leaving that next Friday, but I agree with you that that format changed. That was that a sucked. big deal. Yeah. That was a thing. Going to like Lord of the Rings midnight showings. Uh, yeah, the Thursday night previews no, generated three point nine. But we're going. Like I went to it because I thought that like because I did. I, I went to see Avengers Endgame with uh, my brother opening night that Friday night, like at eight, like eight o'clock show. And it was like one of those viral moments where the place was like, you know, ruckus. Everybody's so I there. the same thing would happen with De Deadpool. What was I going to say? Deadpool and Wolverine. No, I said Dealpool. Dealpool and Wolverine. I thought that there'd be a lot of energy. No energy. Really? No. Like even at like the big parts, like people were like, hmm. Hmm. did you go to, did you see Dune? Did you watch that at all? I watched them um, both at home. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. But I wish I did see um, 
either or. I in saw IMAX. the second one. I did see it in IMAX. Yeah. And it, I saw it. I finished the book the day before, that Friday. I finished it. I feel like I get overwhelmed in IMAX. And, uh, yeah, that's the point. And I can't I get went, the whole thing in my head, though. Dude, it was badass, and it was cool. Yeah. It was that shared experience. That's yeah. the, you know, that's why I like to go to and the movies, too. people were reacting to the film? Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. they should. Is that, how much does that take? 35 No, it's it's like 20 bucks. That's not bad at all. Um, but when, you know, like when he, when he mounts the sandworm, yep. and everybody's like, holy shit, like how are they going to pull this off? And they pulled it off beautifully. Oh, yeah, that was And cool. everybody, I mean, people aren't clapping. I like know. Chalamet. But yeah, I don't have anything against him. Have you ever seen a, a film he's in with Steve Carell called um, Beautiful Boy? Negative. You got Amazon? I got yeah, I got them all. Fuck cable Check, bill. I, what's the it film just you hit. told me to watch? The Revenge French one? Irreversible. I'll watch Irreversible. Your recommendation <laughs> recommendation, excuse me, is that film. I would not don't watch that with your boy. No, of course not. I went to see the Deadpool Wolverine film first too, with the expectation that I needed to check to make sure it'd be okay for my eight-year-old, and then three minutes in, I was like, "That made a great move." You're, you're. I mean, they put Wolverine's claws through some guy's balls, and I'm like, "You're a sensor." Um, it feels like it's against mom, your nature. His mom. I didn't ask about his mom. I asked about you. How do I put it? All right, so like, I didn't think I would be a sensor, but then here's the things that are different from being a dad now versus a dad during our era, right? So like. In my era, we would come out here to a location like this in the woods and we'd bring fake guns with orange tips so the cops yep. <laughs> knew that we wouldn't die. You know what I mean? You know that's the reason why, right? But, yeah, 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 I know. Some people don't know that. The I, re I remember have to have the doing orange. that. Um, but you know the cap gun orange trigger, though? You know that, right? Like, yeah. It has to it's be that indicator. color indicator, yeah. Um, there was that. There was, um, you know, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, select, start, BA, BA, Contra. Yep. And these things all had an end. Eventually, you couldn't stay out here in the woods past dark, you know? I mean, you could now as an adult, but you had to go home. Contra ended, even Mario ended, dude. Mm -hmm. Mario 2, 3, those complicated games with the fucking raccoon tail. That's 3. Ended. But Fortnite, have you played it? No. Okay. My kids do. When you were a well, kid, Dylan did you ever play Capture the Flag? Hell yeah. Okay. I threw that shit in the bottom of my pool and nobody could get it. And they oh, said okay. that was like cheating. That. You should establish those rules in the beginning. Oh, well, then, yeah, it leads to an argument. Did you ever play, like, Capture the Flag, like, in a uh, we played it on a neighborhood. large outdoor like, place like this or in the woods? We we played it on our block. So, no, never okay, in a yeah. setting like this. So, like, that, like you know, a gameplay battlefield-type situation, right? Like, uh, we used to go up to the Poconos, and in the Poconos, we would do it up there. And, like, it felt like Fortnite, you know? But my son, he can't get the... He can't stop with it because, one, the game don't end, Okay. It goes on forever. You, you never yeah, I didn't think there was a point to but it. But you don't pay for the game. You pay for the shit that comes along with the game. And like when you want it to be Ryu or Ken in Street Fighter 2, all you had to do was click down or right. This yeah, now you gotta each buy is it. 20 bucks. And that's how that's so also too. That's the, a whole other topic we the, can get there's into. There's a dopamine push to that that has created such a divide in um, being a parent because it's like, I don't know, if you have a male son who's, you know, Chock full of testosterone. Yeah, I'm not well, used yeah, to it. I do. He's gonna be six. I'm not used to it, dude. Like I, my brother, uh, it's gonna get worse. I, I, I had a sensitive, loving, uh, homosexual brother. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, I'm not used to all this like testosterone. Like, I'm not getting off that game, Dad. You know, it's like, oh shit. But it's I tough, myself man. played the game to see if you know. I mean, like any good dad. Actually, in the film Beautiful Boy, he's addicted. Chalamet is addicted to crystal meth. And Steve Carell's his dad, and he can't come to terms with the fact that he's losing his son to this thing, and he wants to know what is it. And I think it's pretty. Natural. Steve Carell's character is a writer for Rolling Stone, and this this is actual book, it's a real story portrayed in film. So he goes out and buys crystal meth on the street himself and does it, and then he writes a book. And dude, it's a great scene. It's a great movie too. It's not that for that, but it's great for like recovery it's also good for like understanding love and being a father and all that stuff but um chalamet kills it i'm looking forward to him as dylan have you seen the trailer for that what do you he's mean? bob dylan oh yeah yeah they were doing uh shootings down in um cape may area where did... yeah they were asking wow. for extras stuff like that yeah it looks cool um yeah it's i forget what my original point was i was on a little tear there it happens yeah it's okay oh no so the thing i was asking about was you being a censor because it's not oh, really that's your it. style. Yes, yes. So, like, 
th that's what I'm sen I'm censoring the amount of violence, not the violence, if that makes sense. Sure, because when I was a kid, as long as uh, I there weren't some titties, it was all good. Yeah, you know, for some reason, like titties were the, the the bad thing, but the yeah, violence and the that. drugs, so that so was fine. That's one thing though that like I'm trying, like I'm not like teaching my son about titties, but I'm trying to explain to him. Like oh, he knows. My parents used to. Um, like that generation wouldn't like change in front of their kids or be nude in front of their kids. Yeah. I'm like, Ty, you can be nude when you're inside. If it's your house, you can be nude. It's fine. Don't be shamed into thinking it's not, you know? It's his house. He's, he's like, a little he's kid. Like, Dad, you sleep at, like, uh, so I was like, yeah, sometimes I sleep nude. He was like, why? I got a shower like, beforehand. It's, yeah, I'm not in there like yeah. <laughs> dirty from like, work, you know what I mean? Like, it's a good point. I should have said that. Yeah, so, right. I got it. Only when he's thinking, like, my, you know, like, whatever, but. When the kids I, are, I, even I our kids open, are home, like, by the time naked. he gets to be a teenager, I want to be open with him about sexuality and not like hiding the fact that, like, you know, like the the sick thing is like we as a culture we talk about sex, but we don't. It's not like a thing like of the past. Like back in the past, dude, like it wasn't taboo to like you know see people, you know, the Romans love. used to shit next to me. Exactly, each other. dude. And like the other thing is crazy too. It's like. Sex is like it's healthy, and it's like without forbidden. it, none of us would be here. It's forbidden, exactly. And like you know, it's like people that you know don't think too much into that, don't watch this, don't do that. And it's like, but that's what we're supposed to do. God wants us to procreate, you know what I mean? Like, we're supposed to regenerate. And like, I mean, literally, the, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, there's a chapter in there where it explains the theory of like their. I, I have it. I haven't read it. Their, their, their version of re is their index. You can look this part up. Yeah, I have it at I'll home. My legs real quick. Um, there's a part in there where it, it, it describes a sequence where a soul who's about to be reborn or born into existence, depending upon where you're at on the Dharma wheel, comes to a playing field. And like you're at this like large area, like we were talking about kind of with Fortnite, you know, but it's sure. just people having sex everywhere in various different oh, it's like Woodstock f formats and like you know it describes the soul walking observing and then eventually choosing and then going into that that those bodies interesting um so i mean like there's that and it's also too like you know what happens to yourself like scientifically when you have sex like the amount of uh, dopamine that is released into the brain um that that type of dopamine release can help like people like um fight cancers you know what i mean like we don't well, talk yeah. about it it's, no, a good, it's a good feeling exactly dude but the, what was the one thing i read that was just wild okay oh yeah 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 okay um how do i go into this without sounding like a lewd fool <laughs> it's a uh, number that should I got be it. taboo I got, I got, okay um okay recently i went um a little bit of time uh being uh what's the word has it been, I've been married for so long. What, what, celibate? What, celibate, right? Just for me. Me, celibate, you know. But then I start to read into more, like, of uh, the old times and stuff. And, like, really what happens is... Bad news. Case, so, like, literally, like, you know, like, if you believe in these force fields of energy inside your body called chakras and stuff like that... I know what you're talking about. This is what it applies to. It's, like, basically all of our energy is kept down here, right? And if we get rid of it, and you know what I mean by that... Yep. Yeah we're just in a stagnant part, right? So I start to feel like after a few few days, energy like lifted, you know, and like feeling vibes. So I read about it and it's like, you literally are, that has to rise back up and eventually get to the top, you know? And then that's like where, you know, you experience what they would call Christ consciousness being reborn inside. Not like, you know what I mean? Like not him being resurrected, but you being resurrected from the inside because you've allowed your energy to rise back up. That's not a really foreign concept because it's like, what happens when you exhaust yourself? You gotta fucking take a rest, yeah. right? So, the other thing that it's tied to is like, um, you know, your whole body is like, a, um, some people believe that the Bible is a analogy for your body. Christ was 33, 33 vertebrae in the spinal cord, you know, the pituitary gland has the third eye, like all this weird shit's sure. connected to it. I've done lots of studies, let's just put it that way. But I can say though that it's a shame that like, in this pocket of time that we've grown up as adults and now my son i feel like this generation coming up deserves to have sexuality back in it is what i'm driving my point back to because after the 60s in the woodstock era you know got a little wild after the like, so, 70s and 80s so, got wild so like they get rid of the psychedelia right because nixon everybody's like oh don't let these guys 
They should have never said tune in. Tune in and drop out. They should have just said tune in, not drop out, because drop out refers to the lifestyle of being like a, you know, I'm, I'm leaving uh, high school. I'm a, a bum. A bum, you a know? Bum. They fucked that all up. And it wasn't until I was like in my 40s where I was like, oh, yeah, that was a poor choice, you know? Like, but they got rid of all the psychedelic medicine. And then people were like, what are we going to do? And then cocaine came out. Everyone started getting nasty, dancing, feeling all gross and shit. And then AIDS, swapping, you know, and then AIDS fluids. literally changed. Like, I remember as a kid being like scared of sex because I didn't want to get See, AIDS. That was before that was I was born in 85. So that I, I, was so AIDS was never like a thing. I'm five in 85 hearing my parents watch the six o'clock news, hearing things like, um, you know, uh, clubs in New York City closing down, like all this stuff. And sure. Hearing my parents reaction because at the time everyone's tuned in, you know, to the TV and like this stuff. Well, you read, you didn't have so many outlets like you do today. I read this fascinating book once about um, like I wanted to know more about it because like you know I, I'd start listening to Queen and like I had had this moment like as a kid like um, you know th there's this perception of like the public like before the internet like you would hear stories through people or on the cover of the Star magazine in the grocery store. I remember and that. I thought that Freddie Mercury, you know, literally got. AIDS and then just died. I didn't. I wasn't no. aware of the fact that the man gets AIDS, continues to work until he can't work no more. Tries to complete all these albums and does all this work. And I was just so saddened by the fact that you know he had died from it. So I went back and like I wanted to know not where you know people were like oh it had to be it's some sort gay of cancer monkey and this and like no like it was way more than that actually. And like there's this horrific story about patient zero. Have you ever heard of this? Uh, I'm familiar with the term, but it's just a, it's like, okay, it's a generic so term. Apparently, there was a ship that came back over from the Navy around, I, I shouldn't say the year because I have no idea. It's in the beginning of the AIDS pandemic At in some America. point. But like, what happens is, is like this guy gets, um, they were doing Has tests, right? And when you do a test, I believe in a litmus test, you have to label stuff zero through nine not one through nine because if it's something, I don't know, but it has to have that zero numerical value. Sure. And this guy happened to have that number associated with him so everybody thought he was patient zero here it turns out he had nothing to do with it at all no it just has to do with the numbering yeah and also there's ties to the you know who knows who created that but just whack shit dude i always thought like it'd be that would be a cool movie about that guy he's like dude i didn't do this because it's, there's not have you ever been like accused of something that you know you didn't do but then yeah the, it's the, infuriating the illusion or how do i yeah we should write this movie dude people okay. no, don't People are very quick to believe everything that they hear without actually, like when I was on a jury and we had an audio recording to say mm -hmm. that money swapped hands. Mm -hmm. And then when we were in deliberation, it was, uh, my whole point was, well, we don't know. Like we didn't see any money change hands. And they were like, come on, man, obviously, you know, like and it had to have happened. I'm like, yeah, but we didn't see it. Like, I don't. I don't know. I have I, all the evidence proves that yes, this did happen, but I don't actually know. And people are very quick to jump on that because it's easy. They don't need to think anymore. They don't need to break things down. They need to analyze. They don't need to do anything like that. They can just say, "Yeah, he's right." Well, how is he right? Why is he right? Prove it. Show me. Yeah. Let's see all this. And people go. Yeah, I I, I want to do that. I want to go. I want to go have some beers. I'm going to smoke some weed or bang my wife. And, you know, what mm -hmm. simple pleasures. I mean, we're all victims of that. But people were very quick to just say, nope, nope, that's it. That's what happened. Yeah. Well, I mean, look what's happening right now. I haven't talked about it on my show, but I mean, it's embarrassing to me, honestly. Like, I'm in a real like you know, it's not, it's a comedy thing as well. But like, in all sincerity, like I'm just disgusted with the state of not myself. But the world that I'm in now as an adult, the one that I observed that we talked about so briefly, you know, like the 80s and 90s, like, God, this I would have loved, loved, is it though? I don't know about There's that. There's a saying that the decisions that you make now influence the life that you live in Hear five me years on this now. I don't believe that the decisions we are making are decisions of our own. And I believe it's been that way since around... Post World War II, once the government starts to break in into different factions, then Kennedy starts to bring up the awareness of secret. Eisenhower started it. Yeah, but yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, so like, I remember being eight or my son's age, and my dad showing me the Zapruder thing like yep. once, and I'm like, that's a JFK assassination film, and I 
couldn't get out of my head about that because I'd grown up watching Ronald Reagan because he was like a president for a decade. You become, you know, familiar with them at that time. Sure. It was almost like Ronald McDonald in your house, you know? It was a time, too, where the president felt like your friend, no matter who he was. Which See, I didn't weird. grow up with that one. Um, First president Bill, I really remember, though, I mean, was, was George H.W. Okay, Bush. so like Bill Clinton. And then like Slick Willie. You were what? Yeah, you were like Slick seven. Willie, I was like seven. Bill Clinton I remember was your finding friend. out what fellatio meant because of the Monica Lewinsky trial. Really? Oh yeah, I know. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, was, like you know, okay, I was so, what eleven, oh, ten. So yeah, that was like the part of like, it, like you know, too is like, where are we going as a society when you have the president of the United States talking about? I did not have relations with her. She did not suck my pee pee. I mean, I don't think most people would have argued with him. Like, that's where they say, "Well, wait, where's where was Hillary?" You know, that's the other different thought. different stories. <laughs> There's something. All right, if we want to backtrack, you were talking about energy building up, and you're talking oh, yeah, about. Let's go. We go through. We go this through, like that. We can. We go through the list. So, I like it. The the only reason I'm not in a rush I'm here. Are you in a rush? It. You gotta go. Uh, I don't. I don't really have to. The kids are home. We're gonna go past my traditional hour format because we just did 50 minutes and that was easy. Um, we. I'm fixed. Oh man, I forgot. Let's. Can we talk about that? So I'm fixed, and I always wanted. I try to get fixed at 18, and they were like, "Absolutely not. You don't know anything yet." Um. So that drive, like we neuter animals to suppress I, that I, I drive. I'm gonna pause you for one second and just say this real quick because it's too fresh on the mind. Hey, how are you? Um, I just lost my train of thought completely. Uh, it's fixed <laughs> me. Now, then what are you saying? It? I got a vasectomy. But then would you say the last the last sentence? You're talking about the build up oh, of energy. Yes, the doctor could just say to you straight up, "No, son, you 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 don't want to have that." At, oh yeah, they did. But now. But I'm saying they said that then, but now they'll tell you if you want to become a woman. Sure, go ahead, take your dick off. I know, I know somebody that's going through that. Look, this is a different thing. It's a whole thing. like I look. I said something. I, I mean, it's not. It's not all problem. Sure. Look, I believe in being whoever you want. You know what I mean? But what I don't believe in is some ass doctor among the board of directors in his community telling him we need to push this type of medicine and we need to get this type of surgery happening. Melissa and I were just talking about this. I don't yesterday. agree with that. She was amazed that they wouldn't let you get a vasectomy so you could have a better life. <laughs> not suffer so they um so but all right so energy um i would say that ever since i i got fixed like there's still a drive there's still a sex drive i don't have that necessarily you're talking about like it's it's, it's happening it's got to happen it needs to happen it still does like it doesn't really change anything i'll tell you what though man the first time because they tell you you gotta leave it alone for like two weeks and then they're like then you gotta. The, the doctor gives you a schedule. He's like, you have to. Uh, you gotta clean out the you, pipes. You, okay. Yep. X clean amount of times mm -hmm. before your sample. Did you Did you do this correctly? Yeah, but I tell you what, man. The first time, you're like, all right. What is this gonna be like? And uh, it's no different. But you're talking about that. That energy, you know, like because what they basically what happens when you get a vasectomy is your my my balls are still producing. Semen. Yeah, it's just not going. I, I read that. It's just it is yeah. just getting it's getting absorbed into my sack, and then my body's discarding it in other ways. Just like when you take a vitamin, like you take a B twelve vitamin, and then you you know two hours later you urinate and it's bright fucking yellow, because that's all the excess vitamin that your body can't handle. So as far as that like virility or that feeling, well, have you gone a couple of days without? Oh like, yeah. After that. I mean, during the surgery, you had to, but since then, have you? Oh yeah, it's it's yeah. honestly, it hasn't been. Well, like I was saying there was there was a time where you know the wife and I were going through a little bit of struggles, mm -hmm. and uh, we we ended up working through that, and it, it actually helped our relationship. But we realized like certain things aren't as important as we think they are at certain times. Other times, yes, it could be a priority, but in the grand scheme of things, like what is really important to the relationship, and we try to approach it as like a team. Not just like, I have needs, you have needs. Yeah, no shit, we know that. Mm -hmm. But at, together, sometimes, like, you're, you're married, you have a son. Sometimes there's external forces that are more important or desire more attention or require more attention mm -hmm. than you sometimes are capable of giving. And that's difficult as a parent. You know, you, you're like, I can't. The worst feeling, especially when my dad was laying in the hospital bed, and I'm like, what can I do? Just, just tell me, what can I do? Just be here with me, right? No, they told me to go home because he was in a coma. There was nothing that I could do that would make <coughs> anything better. And that was 
the worst feeling. And I'm sure that in your lifetime, you will experience that with your son. And it is going to be. I felt that way with my grandma when I could. They wouldn't allow me in to be with her when she was dying because of COVID. It's Fuck bullshit. Yeah, bad. Yeah. He and went the, through the, the same the, thing. The worst thing is, is like I did get in, right? But they put me at a fucking table, man, and like it was like a king's you, long table. You and, and like, Franny, right? Yeah, and like you, you guys know, were close, always. very tight, dude. And like she's at the end of this like long table. I'm like, let me just go touch her, you know? Like I don't. I, I honestly, I don't like, care about. Go I honestly um, changed everything like in my mind's eye with it because like um, like in a nutshell, like you know. Um, I don't know. I, would I get the vaccine now? I don't know. Because honestly, like, it was, I, I just, I, it's weird how, like, we all just, like, we were talking earlier about how, you know, in today's culture, it's like, okay, let's just move on with my life. Let's not even question that. Like, the government made us take some sort of medicine, you know? And I'm just like, when has that ever happened? Before? Polio. Huh? Polio. But did the, gover the government mandate that, though? Well, I mean, the government didn't technically mandate the the COVID vaccine because I got COVID early, like in 2020. What was your experience? I, I couldn't smell or taste anything for like two weeks. I'm perfectly fine, perfectly healthy. I just, you, it's funny how you have no desire to eat when you can't taste anything. I had it too as well. Same, I had the same uh, symptoms with like, you know, the no taste, no smell thing. I got sad because I like smells. I have a... Uh, I love smells. Man. What's it called? I'm a big as, candle is guy. Is it called aphasia, aphasia, aphasia when you have smell memory? What's hey. that? How you doing? Um, so smell is the sense that is most tied to memory. Yeah, but what's the name of that type of uh, sensory? We don't have an assistant, but whatever. You could look it up for us. Tell us. Yeah, I mean, we future. can look it up too. But I have that here. all the time. And you know what I have it a lot with? The smell of the plastics that came out of tapes, cassette tapes. Sure. Especially two cassette tapes that I love the smell of. And they were John Bon Jovi, New Jersey, Pearl Jam 10. I don't know what they used for that paper, dude. But yeah. And every now and then, like, I'll be like walking somewhere like Pearl Jam 10. I Weird. understand that. You know what I mean? The, the worst is when you know the smell and you can't pinpoint the memory. And you're like, what is that? What is that? Yeah. And like, it's like at the tip of your lips and you're like, why can't I understand why can't I make this connection between brain and mouth? Yeah, it happens a lot. It does. I enjoy it, though. One of the things that I've been working on, the, you know, this is the part where I'll, I like lose 2% of the listeners when they start to think I'm practicing to be a wizard. But it, <laughs> it, 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 it worked uh, today. Um, I do this, uh, like, say, for instance. That's the first I've heard that one. Yeah. Uh, you're thinking about, like, I if I want to contact like Harry somebody, Potter wizard no, or like well, D&D like, wizard, th this is what I've been practicing and it's been working actually. And I, I've been, I should start journaling it in real time and try to document it on tape. Just do this movie. Yeah. But it'd be cool to show because like, well, how, you can't really show yourself thinking. Unless you got, you like, like, and shit? No, I just think of somebody, you know, and just okay. put all my energy into them. Like, and just in my head, in the car, thinking about them. And then less than 15 min minutes later, you get a text message manifestation you call it or like literally okay. no i understand what it, you're saying is it me manifesting which is some term that came up with that i didn't write that's somebody else shit from the last 15 years and they say oh you should manifest your destiny no there's actually a hor isn't that the horrible document or that was manifest destiny it was like some uh, that was a reason word. it was like some reason for racial yeah it was or, terrible shit yeah. yeah so no that's that's probably not the best uh phrase to use so I right. know oh, that was the name of those papers though. They were the um. You're this is funny though that you bring this up because while I was working today mm -hmm. and I'm screwing a screw into a light switch, yeah, I was thinking about what we would talk about today, and I don't usually right. worry I didn't, about. I didn't put no thought into this. Is a good one. No, <laughs> exactly. I didn't. I didn't. And that's the thing is that it mm -hmm. caught me off guard, and then I thought about um, like destiny or choice or free will, and I'm a big fan of. Uh, people are like, well, I, I don't believe that. I said, well, you don't have to fucking believe it. Like, it exists. It is real. It's a thing. And for you to talk about where you're coming from, like, with these ideas of, like, oh, we're, we're, we can manifest this or there's mm -hmm. certain things. Apparently, you and I have had a similar thought today. Mm -hmm. And neither of us talked about it. Nope. But here but we are recording it. now it's interesting that it, it does come up. See, that's just the thing, though, is it's like, um, I don't. 
I, I, I would rather spend more time working on those things than, you know, figuring out the the, the new board for the Yamaha QL5 sure. digital sound. Like, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, yes, I'm very technical with, like, computers and all that other shit, and I get paid for it. But the stuff that I'm interested in, there ain't no paycheck for it. But it's the most rewarding thing you can get is, like, so, like, what what's like like your version on God? Not a not you're an a atheist, fan. right? Not, Tell yeah. me why I'm not a fan. I'm not. Hey, wait, like, hold on, let me rephrase this and let's start from the beginning. So why are you not a fan? I really, I guess it wouldn't necessarily be the the quote God. It would be the people, no, or the uh, stigma or anything that comes with it. Uh, but as far as religion goes, I've never never really been on board uh i've had a lot of people die in the last six years of my life seven years and just to see how some of them go out and for somebody to be like oh god is challenging you or god is doing this to mm. them like i remember before my dad died like watching him shit himself and it's just you know like it, it's embarrassing and they're like you can leave it's like why am i gonna leave like it, it is what it is but uh i'm just not a religious person i never have been um in general most religious people i know are actually really good time and nice people when i lived in brooklyn i used to get to go i got invited to shabbos dinners and yeah they took advantage of me a little bit i had to leave the light switches on and stuff for them but because they're not allowed to do that um i don't think that i'd like to know that i'm in control or at least think it and I'm pretty sure that when you die, that's about it, man. Because you were alive and you don't remember it. We were talking about it earlier. I don't know if we were recording. But when you're one, you don't remember that shit. But you're alive. So... Was that on tape? I don't think it was. I think it was right I, before... I was arguing that I don't think that you're one on your first birthday, you're two. Well, he because... wasn't really arguing. Well, it, it, he was just a statement. I, apropos or whatever. You know what I mean? We were, we were debating, excuse me. Um... But I feel like when you're born, day one, that you're one years old. Like, day one, here I am. One, I'm out the gate. And then the next year, that's the second year of life. Well, I mean, we all really don't know if our actual birthday is our birthday. Well, here's the other thing, too, is the birthday aspect. And I've been looking into this, and I can't remember if I'm podcasting. I love birthdays, man. I think I podcasted with Candace about this, but whatever, I'll say it again. It's like, I, I, I'm happy you love birthdays, because I'm interested to see what, what you think about this. Um, you know, birthdays weren't celebrated. There's a quote you can look up by, um, it's not necessarily a quote, it's findings by, uh, Elon. And he's talking about the happy birthday song and like what it does to you. And yeah. I don't like that. I started observing people like in restaurants, you know, get, getting sung well, a version of the happy birthday thing, but also even just family, any birthday situation, if I'm out, I want to like see how the person looks over the age of like whatever, 40, 50. You know? I don't want people to sing to me. Exactly, because I'm going to tell you why. When they sing to you, like, regardless of stance of whatever we just talked about, we, we have established already that there, there is this unknown thing that is at work sometimes, and you could do other stuff and just be like, how did that happen, you know? With, um... Sure. That's where we hope science works. I, of course, yeah. Um, You've only recently become religious since I've known you. Well, I mean, like, I've been, a, like, I'm no longer with the church. Yeah. That's the first time I podcast about it. But, I mean, when I say no longer with the church, I'm just not going right now. I'm here with you. We're talking about it. And, like, that's how okay. nice it is, you know. And um, there are uh, other people of other every religions now and then, that would say this is the church. This is my church, dude. You know, yeah. and, like. Um, this is, I don't, I hear a plane. But other than that, I haven't heard any no. signs of humans. No, not at all. And, like, the things that, ha like, life is, like, meant to be experienced i'm trying to find the way where to say this without becoming like a preacher because it's just i hate that you know and i've always tried to do my show like that way to not tell people what i believe like you said like a moment ago that you really got hurt by some other fucker saying to you this is just god I'm testing you see you now yeah, this is just, this the way it works hey but it's my because the lord's gonna bless you when you gotta bury it you know what i mean like it's sad when it happens, right? It sucks. And like, I, I have argued on the show so much with the audience about we need to do a better job of taking care of the people 
at the end of the, like I watched my grandma even before COVID flourish. Why? Because I would go to visit her. Sure. Where, whereas. Was she in the so, same place as Ian's grandmother? Yes. Okay. No, no, no. no. Right on um, Park? I'm sorry. No, uh, she was at this place called Town Manor. Okay. And, um, you know, each of the rooms were two bedrooms, right? And like one bed, my grandma. And in the course of nine years, I forget how long my grandma was there, you know, but I, she had gone through over 48 roommates who had all passed away in there. Maybe two went home after. That's and here's gonna the drag you down, man. I saw is that the people who died never had family or anybody come to take care of them. Nobody came to I chat with that. them. You know, and then like I would chat with them, then I'd be depleted from like you know trying to, you know, You're help there for people. Your it's like the, the the thing that's crazy is like all right, so is this why you wanted to have children? No, not really. I mean, it has nothing really. Like I think, so like I used to like my grandfather, my my grandmom's dad. You know, he had a um, he had a stroke when he was. Um, I don't know, 66 or something like that's that. Not that and bad. Then, but then he was paralyzed from it. So then he was paralyzed yeah, that's not good. in bed at that same place for 20 years after. Oh. You know, and, and I used to think to myself, that's too, a like, way after, to live. like, yeah. And uh, I watched my mom, like, you know, dad and my grandma, you know, like, observe it. And, you know, the thing, like, you know, is the back of my mind, too, is just like, we're going to church every Sunday. And God did this to like my um, grandpa, you know. And then there was like, I guess, and these prayers ain't working. Re- but when I recently got re-religious, re-religious is that the thing? It's that'd be a good name for a podcast. <laughs> Trademark Bob Cahill. I realized a couple of things that I don't know. I these these thoughts were of my own accord and not really taught to me at church. But I was able to come to these understandings while at church, if that makes sense. Sure. And one is that, like, um, like the, the things that we were, okay, like, if I could explain to you, like, that communication thing I could have with somebody else doesn't exist with inside my physical body. Like, my skin, my arms, my forearms, my hands, my forehead, none of it is doing that work. There's other things that work, right? Yeah, but they're also in your body. It's your brain. I don't, I mean, yeah, well, the brains, that's the whole different thing, though. Is it your brain or is it actually like a super cell battery with a pituitary gland at the tip of it that contains dimethyltryptamine, which, if you look it up, can take you to the spirit world, which is, in some people's eyes, proof of the afterlife. But what I'm trying to say is, like, I, I got to a point where I realized, you know, especially watching people I love die. It's rough, And man. the grief, like, the grief of, like, when you're, like when my grandma died, there was moments where like I would, I would cry so hard that like uh, I felt like I was like bleeding through my skin, you know, like because she was just like a big part of my life, you know, and um, it's hard. I don't know. Once while under, how do I say this without? Once while in a state of altered consciousness. There you go. One might have communicated with something that felt like the energy soul spirit of my grandma and i used to talk to my grandma a lot and be like come on grandma like do you think there's a way that like when you because she always used to tell me on her birthday she'd be like well this is my last birthday <laughs> like she yeah. was like you know that's so depressing she, there's that generation you know yeah and, that's uh, true yeah and like you know she'd always and it's say, meant as a joke in loving ways. but it messed me up like i got Confused, you know what I mean? Like you got worried. Yeah, yeah. I used to like. I, I developed OCD shortly thereafter that, where I would count the rings in the wood of my door and be like, "If that's seventy-eight, and somebody, you know what I mean?" Like it got sick in the head. But like when I was in this state and I communicated with what felt like my grandma, I was like, "Grandma, how come you? You know, you told me you'd, you'd come haunt me. You know, like yeah. Oh, they always say that. And I heard like. Not a voice, but like understood something being like, um, well, one, I'm sorry, but I'm just so busy right now. There's too much to do. That's uh, and that felt very pretty, pleasant. Felt, it's very pleasant, you know. And it's, like, the thing is, it sounds is, like, very I think happy. It, the, the, it's as sad as it is. It sounds very happy. 
if the, if okay, so like they say that the aliens are only interested in the souls because we're soul containers, right? And that's the only reason they're here. Is that the truth, or are they interdimensional beings who also coexist with us? Who the hell knows? But I don't. I'm not familiar. The with thing this. about the soul or the energy inside of you is that some have stronger ones than others, right? It feels more like energetic, right? You come to a point where you're like, oh my god, this soul energy is insane, right? Sure. That's the part that it sounds like fun. Never dies, you know. Like I, I, I feel like I, the, the the sins of the flesh, the stuff we do inside of our bodies. It's just, I mean, it really is like a prison for a bit, and like the end can be a release. And I've seen it before. Like I had a friend. I think you might remember. Remember my parents' neighbor Dimitri. He lived next door to my parents. To downtown Harvest played in his garage once. Maybe he was like because I knew you he's before Greek and he, I knew him, I knew him for twenty years. He, he passed away suddenly when he got brain cancer, and oh. you know we were talking like I knew that I needed to party with him one time, so I went down to the shore and we partied. That's good. I got him the munchies and I went out and bought him donuts, and we had this great moment sitting at the table eating donuts, you know. And funny the we, shit you remember. We talked about like you know what would happen after death and all that stuff and dude when i went to his funeral and saw him in there never saw him that happy dude i know they do the mortician yeah thing, but i'm talking about like the energy like of his like shine you know being like beat me up you know and like so that's where your dad is i mean like and the other thing that sucks is like what i was trying to convey to you is that the the things that people said to you along the way about religion the things that people lead you to believe are their truth is also the same thing that happened to Christ 2,000 years ago. I mean, he did exist. It's like, they're like, you're wrong. You ain't doing that right. And like, that is completely lost in my parents' version of what they taught me. Sure. Because they taught me a different version of it, being like, this is the law and this is the way. Do it, son. And I'm like, what? I didn't I don't want to be a part that, of that. Way. So that's what I'm trying to say. Is like, it's even if like it's not like that's there's Christ, right? And then there's other entities that you could go to there's buddha there's you know the Tao. there's sheikhism I, hinduism I you name it i like buddhism to be more most in line well, with good, if well, I had well, to let's, use them, but let's use the buddha then and like also the misconceptions that have come along with buddha the same as christ one of the worst ones in my opinion is the fact that buddha now is regulated to a fat little kitchen statue in fact he was not that he was the sinhedrin you know what i mean he was you I think that's the right name Sinhartha. What's it? Had I said no? Sinhartha. Yes, that's it. By yeah. Herman Weiss, the German author. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. that's I think I had whole to book is about yeah. that whole thing. Um, mm -hmm. There's also one of my favorite book series ever uh, called Dark Tower by Stephen King, and it plays on that. But I, I can't talk about that because it's it'll be too many spoilers for people. Yeah, I think they're making it into a TV show eventually. Yeah, Mike Flanagan's doing it. Um, That's cool. He's done a pretty good job with other interpretations as well. Uh, Frank Darabont has also done well, but we'll wait and see, man. It's a lot. The thing is, like, I'm trying to say, like, in a nutshell, is like, so it's you not believe a in an afterlife, but not the one that is spoken about like sure i didn't ask that i just asked if you believed in one i don't know this if that's the, the name do. i don't know if that's the All name right. okay so okay so listen right now you and i are living life okay so as as you and here here look at me i just stood on a rock and almost tripped over a stick my name's bob i jumped off the rock right i'm living my life and then you're using the term afterlife which implies that we continue to do this and as a kid i used to struggle with that like because i'd be like what's the difference well, not only what's the difference, but like, what's the point then of death? If it's just simply, let me get through the store. Here I am into the new club now, right? And like that never like appealed to me at all because it's like well, nobody I, I really, was, you don't really get a choice. Like, did you ever see a film called Defending Your Life? I ask every guest this. No, I have not. Please, everybody, go watch this show. It's a comedy that Mel Brooks did in the late '80s, early '90s, where you literally go to heaven and defend your life, like with a court. And it's funny because they show you clips of your yeah. life that they filmed secretly. They didn't know you didn't sure, know. Sure, of course, and you think and nobody's watching. It's so good. Uh, Meryl Streep's in it too, and she's fantastic. Okay, I like this concept. But like that is like the concept that was so heavily popularized by um, not only pop culture but the, the 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 Western civilization. You know what I mean? Awesome. And like, yeah, but us these these you know patriots, right? But like, 
we took the idea of religion and made it into more of an institution. We made the church into a club rather than the original messages that were put out there. And also the thing that I found interesting, honestly, about Christ, and it's the reason why I do believe in Christ consciousness, I believe that he actually did exist, is that, like, it's the only, like, there's only certain stories where the guy loses, you know, that are, are remembered. And you know what's one that we're not too far from? If we actually got down here on this path, and we would probably went, what, like, 17 miles that way, we could be right at the stairs of the art museum, like Rocky Balboa. Yeah, yeah everybody he forgets he lost that he in loses. the first movie. And that's a story that spawned how many sequels and spinoffs, the Creed series, and like, yeah, everybody they, forgets they, about they that. They changed the way that the like, If you really go back and read about the historical Jesus Christ, right, and then you read because it's like for me, it's like I can't just read one one portrayal of it because I don't feel like that's. It's never fair to like base your opinion upon like one person's perspective. No, especially when that's everybody's going to have. A conflicted opinion about shit, right? Yeah. So there is That's evidence healthy. that he existed as a man. There's, there's even stranger evidence that you can go even like centuries after his, or not. Let's see, 2000, 1982 or nineteen eighty four. This guy. This is where I need an assistant. Right? Some guy who <laughs> likes to be an archaeologist on the weekends, like some dude who has a regular job but likes to go dig shit. Sure. He goes to um, Golgothica, where. Um, or no, I think he goes somewhere near like where Christ was crucified, and he stumbles upon the Ark of the Covenant. And that lore, they believe, you know, that this religious artifact, you know, is this a movie? Th no, this happened in 1984. You can look it up on YouTube. I was on a real late night. So he, he actually found like, he, the Ark of the Covenant, finds, like he finds in Indiana it, right? Jones. He finds something that's like I'm not saying about telling you. So he finds this thing. Then the, the crazy thing is this guy who's like you know a hack and the, the you know scientific community he takes the blood that he finds on this object to a lab and it only comes back with the it doesn't come back with a full set of chromosomes because you know how you get both from your yeah. male this one came back with female so and then after that this guy like disappears nobody sees him i thought that was creepy but there's all that That's other stuff there's all this other stuff along the way like the, but like the thing is is like the more that like i spent a long time like trying to like okay Here's the, here's uh, the historical Jesus Christ right here. I'm standing here about five feet from the center of Zach. Here's my Jesus Christ right now that you and I are talking about, the one that I'm inside right now. Um, and then this version over here, the one that's far from me right now, this is the version that I grew up with. This is the version that stopped me from being a good person to the point where I, I understand now more about what I'm supposed to do. Sure. I, I and think like, that's a pretty common so like, thing for people our age. But the thing age. is, is that... All right, so the, the the creepiest thing, too, and the thing that's just wild that, you know, nobody really... They don't have maps of it. They don't show it to you in high school or anything like that. But, like, so why is Jesus Christ the Messiah, right? Well, if... I guess that depends who you ask. Well, I mean, here's the thing. is like there's proof of the Old Testament existing before the New Testament. They didn't have the New Testament before Christ came out. It's like them writing Back to the Future 1, 2, and 3 before they, you know, they didn't have that back then. Right. But the Old Testament has this map. It's a scattergram plot point of all the things that they said centuries ago matching up with the other, you know. Could have been changed throughout time, but there is historical data to support this. But interestingly enough, you would think with like all these percentages being in the favor of him being the Messiah, right? That the chosen people that he came to help, he they would acknowledge that they didn't. So Jewish no. people don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, you know. But well, no, if you interview Jews. somebody who's Jewish and you ask them straight up, you look on YouTube. There's lots of videos of like, so who do you think came close? Is he coming still? Like some of them say, no, we think it's him, but we are not allowed to say anything. It's I. Like, I don't, I don't believe any of it. But here's the thing. is like Because it's not going to matter, man. I mean, here's the thing. is If life is just a series of just points of conjecture, you yeah. know what I mean? You know but, how long house flies and stuff live? Well, I mean, that's just the thing, though. Do you think they have a soul? I don't think they do. Not flies. Uh, I think certain animals do. Not all. Dogs, sure. All dogs. dogs yeah. All dogs got them, dude. All dogs. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I love my dogs. I met a deer it's, or two you know, out here before. I'm like, what? You want to hike a little bit? Still trying to shoot one of them. You want to walk a little bit or you want to drink a little bit? 
Uh, no, we, I'm good. I'm just enjoyable. It's okay. nice. Okay. I don't know if you were getting a little restless there. No, no. I no. usually don't sit this long here either, but it's nice. It is very. We've watched the sun now move. Oh yeah. But I, I just, I mean, like, I just my. I'm not going to go on because I become like a pastor, but just look into your own version of something because there is something at play. You got to admit to yourself: Are you here to look at your phone? Are you here to look no. at your iPhone, and Android, and check the weather for tomorrow? Or are you here actually to do good works? And the one thing I know about you, Zach, unequivocally, is that for the last 20 years, I've watched you done lots of good things for people. You're very kind to people. You yeah, know? we know it's been um, probably almost 22 years now. Why do you do that? That's a good question. Why you don't do you... Really, because you don't really think about it. It's not really a question. But in the you moment. You do it exactly because it feels right, right? Like today, yeah, like I held the door. That's what you should be doing. Huh? It's what. It's not necessarily what society would expect from you. It's just what, as a human, you feel like this is, yes, I have the ability to help, so I'm going to. Well, I'm just saying that energy, it's hard comes, to ask for that help, energy too. comes from a place of goodness. So it's like, where does that come from versus somebody who just walks by somebody like on the street and like, you know what I mean? It's really What's easy that to lie in the Joker? People. If that was me lying in the street, you'd walk right over me. It, uh, it's really easy to be nasty. This is like what we were talking about earlier, like going through, uh, not necessarily therapy, but sessions, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And and it's like, well, it's real easy. Like, I got no problems giving into those emotions. Sometimes actually fighting those is harder. And that's where yeah. people don't see it, where they're like, well, you know, you could have been nicer. Like, you have no idea what, you know, the process goes on in my head or what, what I want to say or what my brain comes up with. Yeah. And then what you choose to say is what matters, but they don't always get to see that. So, so that's that's the part of you that I would say is like, you know, on the right right path. It's gotten easier as I got older. You know, so, when I was younger, man, it's easy to be a prick. A student of mine who is uh, studying uh, to be like a, a priest has brought this one thing to my attention. It was like, it's not about the good works you do. It's about acknowledging that Christ is your savior, like to receive you know, what one would just describe as the afterlife, like I said. And one of the things, to be honest with you, for, for me, Zach, is that that um, that altruism stuff that I do for people, I'm not doing that so I can get, like, a good suite in heaven. You know what I mean? Like, I'm doing it because it feels good right now. And, like, I've never really been concerned about the afterlife. Sure, like, but... the afterlife is, like, when I was growing up, I was like, it's the biggest thing. We got to get up there and see yeah. our relatives. And I'm like, but what about right now, dude? We're alive. But what because you're some talking people about believe in Christ and God and use that as an excuse not to live now. But what you're talking about is a, in scientific terms, this dopamine reward from doing something that you believe is right or good. Like it can be explained. You're just you're putting it through a different lens. And like to me, like everything you're saying, like afterlife, you know, these things, like I don't I don't I'm not into it. It uh I have a certain autonomy and uncertain control, and the hardest thing to accept is the shit that you can't control. Because mm. I can't control your actions. I can't control my wife, the kid, the dogs. I can't do any of that. All I can do is try not to be the reaction and just try and do, be nice, be appreciative, be thoughtful. And it's not easy all the time. Especially, I guess, in your case, well, in my case, where there's, this is it, man. This is all I got. Yeah, I, I, I just, I don't know. I have always, even when you knew me when I was 20, I was thinking these thoughts like, sure, where are we going? You know what I mean? And like right into the ground. I stopped. Um, I mean, yeah, this body's going definitely into the, well, hopefully somebody's dragging me out here because this is where I want to be. But like, I get that the mind, especially when you alter it and like you can go to various different places through various different substances, which I read about and I, I hear is incredible. And oh like, yeah, man, I'm a big fan of this. I don't have the it. time for him anymore, but it's just a thing. It's too much of a commitment. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's just, it's just something that's always just plagued me. It's just like well, it's like kind of like not knowing the end of like one of your favorite movies, but like not really caring. The you Dark know? Tower series, the one I brought up earlier, mm -hmm. Stephen King wrote the first four books over like a 15, 20 year period, and uh, he had letters from people on death row, writing him letters saying. How does it end? And he had to write him back going, I don't know. It hasn't come to me yet. So there's plenty of people that yeah, know that good. feeling of just, you know, I don't know how this is going to end. There's there's a, a feeling, though, of, like, uh, gratitude for, like, knowing it exists, but, like, knowing while here, 
you know, there is more to the the story than just like going to work, man. Like, oh fuck yeah, dude, God, absolutely. I, so I was kind of hoping like, to not talk about work today. That was one thing I did think about. I mean, it's just because it only. Well, it I'm comes scared up. to death of elevators, dude. I don't know how you do it, so I had to bring it up. Well, no, it's fine. I, I feel like I got. Oh, that's the other thing I forgot to mention. In the hotel to the casino, you have a green chip. They're twenty five dollars, and I was trying to play this game with everybody, and nobody wanted to play. It's like, what'd y'all come here for? To like look at the casino? Right. I was like, look. I got $25 against your $25. You can pick which side. We're all going up, right? So I'm like, you can pick which side of the you know room the elevator is going to appear on. To your side, you win my 25 you know? Sure. Simple. 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 Making fun things Nobody out of nothing. Me. Every time that I was like, well, hypothetically, if you were going to pick, which side would you pick? And then they'd be like, here. And it'd be like, ding, ding, ding. And I was like, should, should have shook my hand. You were only 25 bucks. Yeah. But that'd be a great game. Elevator, casino. Bing, bing, bing. Which side? It's too easy to rig. There, you you know. Once well, you I mean, ride the elevator, that's the thing about a slot machine. Is like well, you're people don't money care. Into a machine. People don't pay attention. Tell me one machine that like doesn't like 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 putting quarters into a soda machine and then having it getting stuck in. You know what I mean? That was annoying shit. Or when you're the vending machine where the it gets stuck and you got to try and shake the machine. And it yells at you. I think eventually the, we won't see those things. I'm surprised they still they're still around. Because, like, lots of things from our youth, like, still exist. They exist. Pay phones, you see, like, every now every and then. once in a while. What's some other things you don't really see from our youth that, like, are... Uh, are CDs? Uh, I don't <laughs> Go know. back. I mean, even the CD section at Best Buy is gone. I haven't been in a Best Buy in years. It's gone. I podcasted about it once. I was furious. I was like, um, how could you do this? We did see some kids riding their bikes the other night while we walked the dog. That was nice. Mm-hmm. You know, nine, ten-year-old kids. That was cool to see. Yeah, kids are starting to, like, try to get out more, but, God, is it hard to, like, you know, like, in my day, like, right now, like, yeah, I mean. Oh, dude, the bike was see, the shit. We didn't see, have we seen any teenagers out here? We saw a whole bunch nah, of people it's in the 60s old, and 70s. Yeah, old people. Everybody yelling at us, you know? But, um. What else? We should, actually, I just saw that it's 445. We should walk the loop because I got to get back. To, I realize at five, I got to feed the dogs and leave them out. My, I got to feed my dog, too. Here, hold that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got that. Yeah, well, I'll talk while Zach pisses, or we can put the phone up next to him while he doesn't. But, um, yeah, the cool thing, folks, is uh, the sun right now is really uh, it's coming together well out here. And you can smell fall just around the corner. I'm walking slightly off to the left so he doesn't uh, pick up the urine in his audio. And uh, I'm looking at the tree to crack in half. It's still, like, you know, got that smell to freshly chop down the middle so people can walk away they left the mains of you know, I don't know what day that was I'll never forget that man. Zach I'll come back to you that way and you know First off, it's just, uh, here, let me get back here a little closer so you can hear what I'm saying. But yeah, it's always, uh, here, here you go, sir. It's always fun having you on the show, dude, because it's like, it's easy. Yeah, I know, you were, you were mentioning that, you know, talking about, I mean, I guess it helps with having a radio background. I remember being in college and getting you guys come up with Williamsport and play some gigs and you guys being on the radio and them telling me that nobody had listened to college radio that much in the history of it, except for when I was music director and I got to put a lot of you guys on. So yeah, dude. having, being able to talk is, is always been easy. You mentioned something earlier in the show, like and walk into a room and pretty much, you know, I like, like Lachlan's birthday party. Like Lachlan's our son, our yeah. son, our friend Ian's son, his second birthday party. You walk our in. Our son. Yeah. Danny DeVito, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And, uh, it, it's like, you know, it's like Bob said, it's a two year old's birthday party. Like, I know how it's not awkward because we all know each other, but in one back room, room and, and be able to just say, hey, what's going on? Or I haven't seen you in a long time. Blah, blah. I think it's extremely hard for people to... Um, oh, that's mine, yeah. It's extremely hard for people to have any type of engagement sometimes without their... Uh, I'm just looking to see if I've left any... Without trash. their significant other? Good. Or no, no, without their phone or... You know what I mean? Oh, like, I hate the phone. Like, um, the phone really has almost become a status like thing where I'm too busy to talk right now. I'm on the phone. Like, I... I, I, I you know, like that's the part where I talk to you about. Like, I don't like what we're going. Like, I don't like this era right now. I mean, the fact that I'm complaining and we're podcasting. I mean, the technology is wonderful. Look, I mean, we're we're doing live 
radio, you know, sure. pre-recorded it's, out in the woods. It's cool. I just don't like how much time it takes up. Like every night with going to bed. Oh, dude, yeah. My wife wants to be on the phone. She wants to play the bubble game or this or that. And it's like, can you please? Like, I came upstairs to go to bed. I don't want these things. But uh, So if I have the phone, it charges in my room. I put it in airplane mode so that way I'm not getting the radiation in my brain. I get, yeah, do not disturb from 9 o'clock to 5 a.m. every day. But I, I do listen to podcasts to fall asleep, which is the be- it's a relaxing way to go to bed. Sure. Or sometimes I listen to this one track called Weightless by Marconi. It's okay. that song where it, like EDM. No, no, it's like this bell frequency thing. I was like studying, like um, if you notice, it's like side, tubular bells. I mean, like okay, so like bell, like fr- sound frequency. Like some believe, sure. like uh, t- the Egyptian god Toth was able to um, mimic, or not mimic, but I don't know how to say it. Um, yeah, mimic is a way. Utilize right? sound frequency to move large stone to build the pyramids. Which okay. If you like, I'm always interested in theories. So, like, sound frequency, the gigahertz, like, uh, sure, everybody knows what it's like to be at a concert and feel the bass. So, from being like, you know, in the the music world for all these years and then getting into podcasting and then recording on my own, you get familiar with DBs, you know, decibels. Yeah. Like, I mean, I just had sound, a sound injury like two weeks ago in this room I worked in where this digital feedback happened. God, dude, I thought I was going crazy. I prayed that night, Zach. I was like, please, God, let me wake up it's tomorrow that. morning and let it be gone. Like, it's like, you remember when you were a kid and, like, you get hurt and you wake up and you're like, I'm good. You know? Oh, yeah, I know. As you get older, that shit slows down. It wasn't great the next day, but it was way better. And, like, I was so. I had to get an MRI last year because of I was worried about my hearing loss. Yeah, that's it's terrible. It's concert related. I got I got hit with an elbow at an Ozfest and blew my left eardrum. Oh, and man. And it's, it's fucked with me all my life. But what year was that? Uh, that had to be like 2000. Two, maybe 2001, something like that. So I went to, because I got two ear infections and it fucks with your balance. And being on top of an elevator, you can't really have your balance compromised. So I went to the ENT doctor Mm -hmm. to see if there was a problem. And he's like, yeah, this, it seems okay, but let's get an MRI to make sure it's not caused by, uh, you know, brain damage or cancer. Mm -hmm. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, God. And he's like, well, we don't think so, but, you know, we're going to do the MRI. Just to be safe and not to ruin your day. Yeah. Let's check and see if your gigahertz are good. But uh, I went and did it and everything was fine, but I fell asleep during it. A lot of people complain, but it's pretty oh, it relaxing. cold and relaxing, yeah. Yeah, they put not, You know what, somebody some actually music. just mentioned that on the show not too long ago. It's not terrible, but, I mean, people have different thresholds for things. But see, sound's powerful, and that's what I'm trying to say is like... Oh, yeah, dude. It, one of the things that's wild is like, there's only a few now left, church churches with bells, but in society, Actual at bells. one point, I forget somebody... Removed them all. Like after the 1920, well, no, just like bells used to be healing therapies. Like you could play a certain thing. Oh, because it was free. That's why. Well, no, if you ring a bell, right, and there's certain sound frequencies that are healing, like the song I was telling you about, the the weightless one by Marconi. If you listen to the song, like I let somebody, I can't say it. Yeah. Somebody I know was nervous about making a real big speech in front of a very large group of people and i told this person to go back to the room look at their notes casually while listening to this song four times in a row and he delivered one of the best speeches to an undesired desirable community who was looking forward to it so it was great but well that sounds you know, good this song definitely can center you dude and like sometimes oh, yeah. on Music the solo podcast i go on the other side of the creek and there's this Meditation spot if it's not preoccupied by the fishers, which I can't wait till the season's over because the rocks mine, baby, throughout the winter. I just saw a fisherman I parked next to one when I got here. I go there and I listen to the song and it helps like center yourself because it's like that. But then there's other horse type. Shit. There's other type. Um, he was referring to uh, the actual horseshit. horse shit. Yeah, not the bells. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> um, there is sound frequencies that can help center yourself, but there's also ones that can help heal yourself. There's ones that can help you, you know get in to- tune with a different like vibration that you're not used to because it is true that we are just firing off of, at the seams protons neutrons quantum physics the whole body is you know an illusion really like did you ever like look into that shit dude like in, in quantum mechanics i think it, um they had this like thing where you can observe like a ray of like like when you look at a ray of protons and neutrons in this like this uh quantum like magnetic like thing they show it only reacts when you're looking at it when you look away from it it's all random 
but right. only when you're looking at it. I forget the proper name, but it fascinates me that that's a thing. The actor that lived locally here, Terrence Howard. That we yeah, were, I know where he lives. So, so we're on Ash Lane. He went on Rogan recently, and he brought up several things that were very controversial in the scientific community because, you know, they thought he was nuts, you know, but like... That's how it always have, goes. Yeah, he has a... Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, like uh, the guy that found the Christ blood and then disappeared. Yeah, you know, and Galileo and all that stuff. Exactly. But um, Terrence was talking about how the periodic table of elements that we were taught is taught, you know, like linear, like, sure. you know, going down where in fact it's more like a cyclone, like a tornado. And like each element connects to the next through a, a sound frequency and like a gigahertz. So okay. the whole thing can only work without the other one behind it. That's not the way it was taught to us in school. It was like even... No, in, not at all. Even in Mark Zuckerberg's home, he has a periodic table of elements, like, you know, separated in his like room as like a TV, like, you know, console or whatever. But like, what I'm trying to say is like, yeah, like the bells, like all that stuff, sound can hurt you. It can heal you. Absolutely. But when I was a kid, you used to hear church bells go off every night. They stopped that. Where I lived in Brooklyn, even though I was in a Hasidic Jewish neighborhood, uh, at the end of my block was a church. And every morning at 6 a.m. and every night at 6 p.m., you would hear the bells. It's just bizarre. And it's like the more you look into it, you're like, wow, that's just like weird that like that's gone now. Like it is. How, yeah, we're talking about the how the T, you know, um, things that are no longer. I mean, even like a mailbox is hard to come by. Dude, our or, mailbox a, was like saying? our mailbox was ridiculously expensive. It's a nice mailbox, but or, it's or you know what I mean, like a residential one, or like one that's like in a neighborhood that you can just look, everyone go to and drop in. Oh no! Well, I see. This is where I get spoiled because I live in Amber Borough, where there's, oh, yeah, right. there's a ton of mailboxes. Like living in the borough is fantastic, man. I love it. It's been. Uh, we Ambler, didn't know right? that we wanted to live there. We kind of. I would just, love to live there. We live there by chance, mm -hmm. and yeah, you guys. You didn't get married at the theater, but that was your pictures and everything, right? I just love the vibe there when I go into town. I mean, I, I love the place that Ian works at. I think they got some great food. You yeah. Have that, well, uh, since Dave took over the kitchen. Do you ever it, have that Harisha was, sauce they got there? Uh, yeah, Harissa. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's the Same falafel. Like it's true, true Irish mix. Yeah, falafel with the Harissa seasoning. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's, the it's homegrown, good. homegrown, like, veggies and stuff? No, everything has been... Dave, Dave no, took over the kitchen. No, that particular sandwich is all made with fresh stuff. Yes, it's all made there, too. Right, I'm thinking I met him. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I see a lot of things, I guess, in Ambler. Like you said, like we have a marquee mm -hmm. in Ambler. Cause you're right, you're it. right, you're right. There is a marquee. I was... God, I don't know how I put that together. Have you been to that place, uh, High Stakes? For yeah. Like, their open mics? I would love to... Uh, no, we haven't been there for an open mic. I know that Drew likes to go there Excuse on Wednesdays. Um, Wednesdays, we usually go over to see Ian, his brother... At Tannery Run for trivia. Can I tell you something real quick? See, remember about man ninety minutes ago? I was talking about not everybody has a soul. I didn't pick up any soul. They didn't even like greet us, look at us. No, they that, just completely they, ignored they, us. I, I don't even hear them anymore. Were they real? Yeah, they're real. Let me turn around, and make sure. Oh yeah, they're there. Okay, but yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. Is like sometimes there's no connectivity between souls, and I believe that is truly like when you are alive is when you can see somebody's soul energy. Somebody like made me uncomfortable. You lived in recently. L.A. Yeah, everybody's like that there. That's what I miss about it. New York is like, is kind of dry. Just, well, I mean, that's the thing too. Is like the thing that people don't understand is like that's a, everything is sold to you the wrong way. From well, Christ, from Christ, if from, someone's being sold to you, it's dude, not in your benefit. From Christ, even to Hollywood, and I've preached about it before. This way, and you know when I like you go to L.A. and like it's like oh yeah, you're one in a million out there, and that's the shit they told you, so you didn't go. Sure. You know, and like that's just not like what you. I don't know. I just being able to pay my bills living in New York City in my mid twenties was a huge confidence boost. That's awesome. It was. Uh, it wasn't easy, man. Like my first job, I I made seventy five dollars a day for a fourteen hour day. I mean that's. Awesome. But I I chose to do it because that's it was in film. Yeah, but I mean, like, that just shows that you had, you know, drive. Ah, uh, dude, it was great. Not everybody I loved that it. no more. It's gone, dude. It's like, a, drive, oh, dude, drive it's... is, like, not a taught thing or it's not even an acquired thing. It's, like, there's certain kids that I come across that have gotten it generationally and they're they're just now coming into it. Sure. But, like, um... It sucked, I, though. It was a terrible life. Remember when we were talking about, like, the, the 
culture, like when everyone loved the president and like everything seemed good. Yeah. Like it seemed like you were encouraged to be an individual back then. Now where it seems everyone's gone into like these groups and they're all identifying into, you know, each other's causes, which is great and stuff like that. But there's no individuality amongst like people other than like YouTube. And it's like, what? Like where, where the I don't fuck, want YouTube. Zach, I'm saying fuck is God. It pisses me off. Sure. Where is today's like Abby Hoffman, you know, or like anybody who was like speaking out against the times, like Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, like there's no, everybody's you know, got a voice Somebody was now. saying that on a podcast recently and it really just affected me. I'm like, you know what? There ain't nobody. What young person right now is just being like, they tried to assassinate the, the ex-president of the United States uh, and it was a total inside job. How could you, you know, like everyone's like, okay, move on. When's it coming? Surprisingly, it has dropped. Like, nobody wanted to talk about it to begin with. It's bizarre, dude. To me, I thought that... And that now, was, there's no comments of it. I, I just thought that was an atrocity, because it's like, how could you, like, allow us to believe that, he, that they didn't see him, they didn't know, and then, like, all this leaked stuff coming out about him being, you know, there hours earlier, having Everybody a saw finder. the guy. Like, dude, it's just ridiculous, dude. And then I heard they went to the kid's house, and, like, it was wiped, like, everything clean. They couldn't get into his phone. It's just like, oh, my God, dude. You guys, they're probably listening to me right now. And it's just like, right, look, I'm not mad, okay? That's just the other thing, too, is like well, some people were like, let's go. We didn't have to do it. Let's go protests. I'm just saying that y'all been doing this a long time. It's not like it's your fault. You probably got this job from somebody else. And they were like, look, you got to do this and you got to do that. And you got to steer the American people down this path. When the like fuck politics. can we get back to being like, you know, like, like Rambo... Like <laughs> coming back to Rambo, yeah. Oh, no, that was Rocky. 1986. Well, <laughs> Rambo came out in '86 or so, the sequel. And Rambo is a hard R. Watch it. He's blowing shit up. Yeah. He's getting cut up on his chest. I had toys that were developed for children. You know what I mean? Like, and like nobody was hurting each other. Nobody was like, you know, like school shooters didn't exist. Like, Just you like have to nobody ask yourself, was like, why did all that happen? Oh, there yeah. were still fat people back well, then. Well, we remember. Well, fast. yeah, but they were like, really I, do you, fat. I don't know. No, you were probably too young to remember this, man, because it's so wild, because there was a call to arms at this one point during the early 80s. We were like, okay, oh, hey, guys, we realize we're living fat, but Did yeah, you know, stop Simmons? throwing your shit out of the window. No, I'm talking, like, they they had these litter laws put into place, because it was so common, oh. Zach. For me, in my car seat, like, I remember being four or five or whatever, like, in the back seat, just seeing pe grown men throwing out, you know, Big yeah, Macs, that and Big Macs off. were styrofoam, styrofoam containers, you yep. know, and like, There'd be all this trash on the side of the road and they would hire people to go clean it, but then it would come back so quick. And then they were like, okay, we got to do something about this. Guys, you got to like pick up after yourself. And that's when- Or just cycling. don't throw it out the fucking window. Yeah. There was a generation of men who were like, you want me to separate my cans from the trash can, bitch? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> there's so many men just there's mad a, about that. There's a parody. Dude, that'd be a funny comedy. A movie about a guy who's upset about that. He goes on a tear. Like, no, there's a- falling down. A par Yeah, of course. I, I've- uh, so there's a parody, though, of somebody where they're like, the government's saying we can't drink beers on the way home. Like, what's fucking next? You know, they're going to oh, tell I've us. Seen that. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, you know, just like. I like to have a couple on the way home. I like to. Yeah, I work hard all day. I like to up. I work hard, you know. I like, to, <laughs> I like to pull back the lid and just feel that hit my lips. Yes. I like when the bird. What was the name of the beer you was drinking? Like Lancashire or something? I don't like, know. I'm sure it's fake. Some weird. Like, the thing that was crazy is back in the day, they had these cans. Where it oh, was the like pool tab. the pool tab, yeah, and like it was like having like an orange juice or something, you know what I mean? Like and it was a well, that way bag. they were drinking them, yeah. And I think it was even like almost like a paper top that my dad had. There was like... always there was always a joke that in the '90s the uh, carpenters union in New York had a clause in their contract they were allowed two beers at lunch. I get how people become alcoholics. I drank on Friday night and I drank on Saturday, so uh, I was down I have to a couple casino. beers every day. I, I I love it. I mean, like the thing for me is that I just. I have my mom's side of the family stomach where I can only go so Doesn't far. Doesn't make you feel good. Yeah, dude, I got sick on Saturday morning or Sunday morning after debauchery. Yeah. I was embarrassed, you know, but whatever. That happens. Well, were you embarrassed in front I couldn't of get. Your... I couldn't get back upstairs. I was downstairs in the casino and, like, I don't know, it was, like, the adrenaline of, like, everything going on in my life and also hitting blackjack and the bonus where oh, I hell spin yeah. the wheel. But, like, the adrenaline spiked up and, like, next thing you know, I was over, like, in the cafe, empty section, throwing up on it. Like a lunch tray, or you know, like a at least you tried. I, I threw up on the tray and I threw the tray out in the trash. Yeah, I didn't recycle. You could just try throwing up in the trash. 
Yeah. I know. It Nobody was wants these, stick it was, their heads No, in it was one of these things. How do I say this without people saying? Uh, it was like a, you know, when you go to McDonald's and you got to put a tree. Through, no, like a trash can where you can't throw up in. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's got the lid it. on. You, know, you, know you can saying? only get it from yeah, the Yeah, I was thinking that. Like, how, how the hell am I going to throw up no. now sideways? You could just take the lid off. It was gross, dude. That, so, yeah, I guess, you know, that prohibits but me. But you're not but... really thinking in those moments. No. Not like that. Yeah, there was one time, actually, funny story. I was in a nail house, in, like literally like Miller's Nail House mm -hmm. in Florida, where I used to live. And uh, this, I was out with my friend Meredith, and this guy loved us. He insisted on buying his shots. Did a shot of Jaeger, and about five seconds after I, mm. I swallowed it, it was coming back. So I went into the bathroom, and I didn't make it, and I vomited all over, like where the sinks are. Mm -hmm. And then I turned around and went to the bar, and I said, "Look, man, somebody fucking threw up in oh the my bathroom, God, Zach. <laughs> and it's disgusting. I can't even get to the urinals." Seriously? And they were like, "Oh my God, I'm so sorry." See, the thing is, is like... I was drunk. See, that's the funny thing. Too. Is we should offer up more grace for ourselves on all occasions when we do weird, gross shit like that. Because we all do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's funny. And it's like, you know what I mean? I think that um, it's comical. You know? I saw this one video on Reddit. God, it's so funny. The guy's like laying down. He's so drunk and he thinks his friend's handing him a joint, but it's a cigarette. <laughs> he takes the dra drag... It throws up while laying down and makes that gargle noise. Oh, like, that's not a good noise. It's no cigarette. So crazy, man. But yeah, man, um, I just want to say, uh, yeah, dude, good job. You, this is uh, the first 90-minute podcast in a while. Congratulations getting into that club. I think this is also your third official appearance or fourth? Uh, I think it's the fourth, actually. I mean, so the last time I was on, yeah. I, I thought about it. I was like, I've been on a couple times now. Like, am I really still relevant? I didn't think about it. The last time I was on was in 2019. We no, I here. mean, sometimes like you come back, you know. It's we were at your just, grandma's house, actually. Yeah, yeah, the old location. Yeah. That was that was a long time ago. When you think about it, it is. This is a different world now. But I, I well, really, I didn't want to do it on on uh, Zoom. Oh, I know I we that. talked uh, during the Zoom. during the pandemic about yeah, doing did, it. Yeah. But I, it's I think just, we did do a, a Zoom on pandemic. No, nope, we didn't. I I wanted to. I'm a in person kind of guy. Yeah, I've since changed in those stances. I've yeah. completely come around. I used to think that, like, you know, it, it's inevitable. There's nothing I can do about it. You know what I mean? Like. Oh, yeah. The next thing's coming is, uh, what do they call it? Monkey pox. Watch out, everybody. You're going to get it. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Come live I mean, your life out here in the woods with me. It'll be great. It, uh, when it comes to an airborne thing, it is what it is. But now you're like a regular, you know what I mean? There's no set trilogies. You come back. No. Uh, I think I'm going to try to do this to the day I'm dead. So that way, like, if there is a period of time where I have to suffer, I can go back and listen for, you know, hours at a time. Look at this human shit right here. I actually didn't really want to see that. <laughs> Sorry, but I, uh, that's just wrong. I don't know why somebody would produce that. Well, I work on construction sites. I oh, get it. We're down by the bridge. Exactly. No, we're not anywhere close to our cars. No, we're not. We're right here. I didn't realize we were going to come out down here. I am a guide. But no, I, I enjoy our podcast, man. So thank you so much. Yeah, and absolutely. It's cool. It's like, uh, there's nothing to plug. You're just, you're the man. Thanks for having me. Of course, man. Anytime. I'll see you. In, like, uh, we'll make the next one like uh, a little less amount of time between. All sure. Right? Appreciate it. I wish we'd go back to Sam Goody and live our lives again through that because, geez, this is just a bizarre time in my life. With that being said, my name is Robert Patrick James Cahill. The Odyssey continues. And this has been another episode of The Bobcast. <laughs>